right, here we're going to have an example um, starting our study of standard position vectors and component forms. Uh, the last section we had vectors that were describing uh, force and describing um, uh, airplane travel and wind travel and all of those were based on, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them were based on bearings um, and then for the force problems they were in relation to each other. These vectors are going to be on a coordinate plane. So let's first um, sketch this. We're going to start by just sketching a, uh, a coordinate plane, x and y, and this component vector is going to have an x component, which you can see right here, and a y component. So let's just graph that. So I go negative 2, or I, sh I should say 2 in the negative direction. So there's 2 in the negative direction. And then I go 5 in the positive direction. These standard position vectors, the tail is always at the origin. And so the tip then lies at the point negative 2, 5. There we are. So I can just connect the two. And like I said, the tip always points out. That is a standard position vector. And so we want to find first its magnitude. Magnitude is a uh, name for length of a vector. And then we want to find the direction. So let's first start by finding the magnitude. And I can do that by thinking of this like a right triangle. So let's take the triangle out of the other drawing. So this leg of the triangle is 2, this leg of the triangle is 5, and I want to find um, the hypotenuse, I'll call it C because we like to use C for hypotenuse. It's also the magnitude or length of the vector. And you know how to do this. So you've got 5 squared plus, oops, plus 2 squared is going to equal c squared, and then when you do that, you end up with c. Um, you already know how to do that calculation, so I'm just going to jump right to the end and say it's the square root of 29. So, therefore, the magnitude of v, that's those absolute value looking symbols there, that means magnitude, is the square root of 29. All right, so now we want to find the direction. So I can find this angle right here, which is in my triangle, which is the same angle over here, and uh, let's find that first, and then I'll show you how that relates to the actual direction of the vector. So to find that angle, let's squeeze this piece in right here. So I can use, <coughs> actually I can use any of my Sokotoas now that I've got um, C but uh, we might as well use tangent because we don't have any radicals then. So the tangent of theta, well that's the opposite side to the adjacent side, and then using our inverse tangent um, notation. So the inverse tangent of 5 over 2, make sure your calculator is in degrees, and then when you do this you get 68.2 degrees. So the position is always measured from the x um, axis in the positive direction. So the position or the direction of my vector is actually this angle right here. Okay. And before I go any further, let me correct some terminology. Um, so I used, in purple here, I used theta in my triangle. We're going to go back and give theta a little cute little hat right there. Call it theta hat. And uh, that's the terminology your text uses because this direction right here, well, that's actually, that's actually my um, direction. So we use little theta hat to represent kind of a reference angle. And then we go back and take, here we'll do it right now, we'll take 180 and we'll minus the theta hat, which will give us the actual theta. So that's 180 minus 68.2, and when we do that, we get 111.8 degrees. 
So the actual direction of this vector, because I always measure from zero, the, the zero on the, in the x positive, in the counterclockwise direction. So my actual direction of the vector right there is 111.8 degrees. So that's how you calculate magnitude and direction of a standard position vector.